Tim Russert's second day on the witness stand ended today as the prosecution rested in the case. He is standing by to talk with us from Washington. First, some background on this day in court from NBC's Kelly O'Donnell, who's covering this case for us. Kelly, good evening. Good evening, Brian. We've seen the prosecution lay out a case that Libby made up a story about Russert as a cover-up, so that if anything Libby might have said about that CIA officer could simply be passed off as rumors and not as revealing official government secrets. How do you feel about this trying to say you had an action? Tim Russert faced hours of questions. I'm going back to work. I'm done. An aggressive cross-examination again today by Libby's lawyer, who tried to discredit Russert. One defense tactic, using TV clips of Russert talking about his own role in this case. I was asked about a phone call that Scooter Libby made to me. Libby's lawyer, Ted Wells, suggested there was bad blood between Russert and Libby. No, sir, Russert said. Wells then pointed to an appearance Russert made on the morning Libby was indicted. Santa Claus is coming tomorrow. Surprises. What's going to be under the tree? Russert testified that he meant it would be a big news day. Prosecutor Patrick Fitzgerald followed up asking Russert, did you take any joy in Mr. Libby's indictment? Russert responded, no, not at all, and I don't take joy in being here. And Brian, Monday, Libby gets to start calling his own witnesses to try to show that any conflicts in what he said about this CIA leak case were just honest mistakes and not deliberate lies like the prosecution claims. Brian? Kelly O'Donnell starting us off from court today in Washington. Kelly, thanks. And now, as we said, for the first time since this trial got underway, we are able tonight to talk to Tim Russert, though I should point out there are still restrictions on what Tim can say, what we can ask, because he could be called back to the stand. Tim, we'll start off with how much time you testified and the essence of your testimony, your answers to the questions. Well, Brian, the over two day period, uh, the direct examination by the prosecutor, the first round was about 12 minutes. The second one, just a, a few minutes. Uh, the cross examination by defense counsel was about five hours or more. Uh, the Central point here is this. Uh, both Mr. Libby and I uh, agree that we talked in July. He called me to complain about some programming on MSNBC, which I had not seen. Uh, he then said that uh, I talked to him about Valerie Plain uh, Wilson, uh, working at the CIA, and that other reporters knew that. Uh, I said that is absolutely untrue. I did not know anything about her uh, until I read it in the Robert Novak column several days later. This is not a role you were asking for, we should probably point out, but you ended up, your version of events, as the, the crux of this case, really. Yeah, it's a difficult position being in the news rather than just covering the news. And also, as someone who makes his living by asking questions on Meet the Press, uh, being on the receiving end in, a, in a, a box in a courtroom, a witness box in a courtroom, is a much different experience. Uh, Meet the Press, you talk. And, and talk to a guest and try to draw them out, let them finish their thought, complete their sentence. When you are in the, the witness box, you are sometimes limited to yes and no answers. Uh, Lyndon Johnson once said that it's a heck of a lot easier to throw grenades than it is to catch them. And was he right? Uh, but what I used for my own benchmark uh, in this particular situation was something I was taught in seventh grade by good old sister Lucille, and that is, if you tell the truth, you only have to remember one story, and that's what I did. And Tim, what was it like? This has become such a big ongoing story and an event in Washington. You were able to look out at that assemblage from the witness box. It was, and it was an interesting cross-section of Washington, uh, citizens who came by to see this in action, uh, journalists, uh, political figures, uh, a real assemblage. Uh, the trial now will continue. Uh, it is something that uh, I did not want to participate, I did not want to be part of, I did not want to testify. Uh, but, but the uh, a judge decided otherwise and I was there. Tim will hope, uh, hopefully find a, a place and a time when it is all over to get it all out uh, and on the record. Tim Russert, though, uh, with restrictions, thank you for joining us from our Washington bureau tonight after two days on the witness stand in the Libby case.